Welcome, welcome to the Tadpole J Miniatures. So this will be the first video in uh, what I hope is to be um, a small series in speed painting, uh, the way I, I tend to do things. Uh, my goal is to help a lot of newer, newer miniature painters uh, figure things out uh, and get up to speed really quickly so they can paint their armies really fast and in a way that they, they have fun um, and uh, enjoy the results rather than um, going through the struggle that a lot of us go through where we're frustrated with our painting for a long period of time. Uh, but what I'm working on here um, is a miniature for uh, Parabellum War Games uh, Conquest The Last Argument of Kings. Uh, this is a uh, high clone executor uh, for the Spires faction. Um, and so what we've basically done so far is we've uh, primed the model black and done a uh, zenithal of pure white ink over the top. Um, I figured I would go ahead and just skip that as very, very simplistic as with the, with the explaining. I did use an airbrush for it, but a rattle can uh, were, would work just as fine. And then up, all we're doing now is uh, we took a uh, uh, game color uh, C, deep sea blue, um, and we're just simply doing a little bit of base coating on the uh, cloak. And so the idea that I want people to take from watching this video is less of exactly what colors that I'm using and I'm going to kind of go over why I chose to do certain things for certain aspects because you can take everything that I've done in this video and simply just change a few things uh, and make it your own style change the colors for whatever whatever army project you're working on and it will work this is how I paint and what I want the main focus to be uh, for this video is I'm going to be sort of explaining why I do certain things. Um, and so the biggest important aspect in uh, speed painting in this, in this way is choosing our colors properly. So what you've seen is I've chosen a very bright color blue for the cloth. And this model has a lot of cloth. I base the model in white because we're also going to be using that white to draw the attention of the onlooker. Uh, the important, most important aspect of speed painting in this, in this way is we want to draw the onlooker's eyes where we want it to go, where we spent the most time, and we want their, their eyes to sort of uh, out, like outwardly, um, peripherally focus on the areas that we didn't. Um, and so what we've done is we've used really bright colors in the areas that we want them to look because our eyes are going to be drawn to those bright colors. So I did the blue cloak um, and we're going to have a white helmet uh, and a white shoulder pad to uh, have those accentuating colors. So uh, we've just got the blue coming on here. Um, that'll just be finishing up. And so now we've got a finished uh, coat of blue and just here showing, you know, exactly which color blue I, I liked um, in case you like it as well. And so then what we're going to do now is we're going to focus on draw, uh, creating as much color variation as we can with as little work as possible. That is uh, a huge way of making something look really good really quick is creating a lot of different color variations in a lot of small areas. Uh, and this model is a great example of that because we've got all this jewelry, we've got belts, we've got, uh, you know, gloves, and we can easily use two or three colors, maybe even a, a light fourth color, um, which I do use in this, to create some very quick and fast uh, color variations to really create some noise on the model uh, with very little effort. Um, and so what I'm going to be taking is I'm going to be taking some metallics. Metallics are great. Uh, for creating a lot of color variation because you've got silvers, you've got golds, um, you could even throw some darker bronzes in there uh, to create some drastic color contrasts. Uh, and so that is one of the main um, things to really focus on when you're thinking about what colors do you want to use. You want to you want to create a lot of contrast in your model. Um, and very much the way I do it is I focus on darker contrast on the bottom of the model and brighter contrast uh, uh, leading up to the top. And so we want to create this 
transition where the top of the model is very bright and the bottom of the model is very dark because generally with light hitting the top of the model we're gonna have a very bright topper area and so we want to use colors that reflect that um, and so what I tend to do especially with this model is I, I did the white and the bright blue on the topper on the top end and then we're gonna be painting a little bit more darker metallics um, more on the mid all the way down to the bottom um, and so I've got I pulled the, apart some um, some metallics off of my uh, my paint station. I literally just chose some random metallics that I like. Uh, I very much like the old gold uh, from Game Color, uh, albeit it is a little frustrating sometimes to use that color simply because it's very it's a very transparent gold. So it will take a couple uh, layers. Uh, I generally have it takes me about two or three layers with that paint. Um, if you want to speed it up, things like Citadel's Retributor Gold are a great alternative for a just baseline gold to use for speed painting. Um, and so we're pretty much just going to put some gold all around the model um, and then throw some silver and some bronze uh, in just varying places. Um, and then uh, once that's done, uh, I will be uh, back for the next section. And so jumping ahead, uh, so here's a majority of the gold that I've chosen. Um, and so we have the, you know, uh, the, the piece in the front of the model, the belts, the, all the little trinkets he's got going all over him. We, we, I just simply threw a little bit of gold, a little bit of silver, um, and really it uh, adds a lot of color variance to the model um, without uh, taking a lot of time uh, and it just adds a bunch of color which is the main goal. We just really want to throw as many different colors as we can with as little time as possible. Um, and then, yeah, I threw some bronze to kind of darken because we've been using a lot of really bright golds, bright silvers, bright blues. So I threw some bronze in there to kind of darken some areas, uh, especially where shadows would hit on the weapon because um, I figure a lower to the ground, uh, more on that darker contrast section that we want, a bronze would uh, really help with that contrast leading to a darker top end of the model. And so now we're just sort of putting in the finish, finishing touches on the bronze, uh, adding in the leather straps. Um, I use a dark, you know, a very dark brown. Once again, it's the belts, um, the leather, all that stuff is very much in the shadows of the model, the, uh, the inner core and areas where light wouldn't hit that much. So I wanted to use a darker color to sort of accentuate that idea. Um, and so we're just you know at this point this is a majority of the work that's that goes into these models is just making sure that all of our base coats are uh what we want that there's plenty of color variation that the contrast from dark to uh, the bottom to light at the top is somewhat there uh, because we're going to add on to that with the two steps that really help bring out these models and so the first one being uh we're going to be using a product um, that I, I really want to go over that is called uh, Streak and Grind. It's by a company called AK Interactive um, and it's essentially an enamel paint that works very much like almost like magic. Um, and so very quickly and I'll, I'll be putting this at the this will be at the front of the video as well um, that this is an enamel paint uh, which is actually toxic it's uh, and it's not it's unlike acrylic where it's safe to put it in your mouth it's safe to breathe it. Um, this is a highly toxic paint in terms of uh, fumes and also the actual paint itself. Um, I purchased for myself a very cheap uh, gas mask uh, respirator, uh, the 3M, and then uh, some. Uh, make sure you get the um, uh, gas specific respirators uh, that go with them. Uh, all in all, I spent about 30 bucks on that uh, and I use it uh, every time. Uh, but this is what the streak and grime looks like in this enamel paint. Uh, I use an airbrush with mine, uh, but it can also be applied with brush. Um, and then this is what the, we're just gonna coat the whole model. And uh, this is essentially what the final product will look like. Um, and so, you know, making sure that you have your gas mask on, that you, no one other, no other people are in the room with you, um, and that you have a very, very well, well ventilated room with the, with a fan blowing away from you um, and making sure that fumes don't spread. Um, and then, so what we're going to do is we've put the streaking grime on, we've let it dry. It takes quite a few hours for it to fully dry, which you don't want it to do. So you have plenty of time to work with this. And then we're just going to take this little sponge here and we're simply just going to very lightly wipe away at it. Um, depending on how long you let it dry, you might have to be a little bit more aggressive with it. Uh, but these little sponges, they're just little makeup sponges. You can get a couple hundred for just a couple bucks, uh, at CVS or on Amazon or anything like that. 
Um, and we're just going to be lightly wiping away where all the where the light would be hitting. Um, and this is very much where you have to really think about where the light is hitting on your model. Um, light is going to be, of course, shining strongest at the top of the model and weakest at the bottom. So we're going to really focus on that idea with this model where we're going to make sure that the top of the model is as cleaned off as possible with the brightest of the color reshining through because this is we're simply removing the uh, enamel paint from the raised areas where it stays in the recesses because we're hitting it almost like a dry brush. Um, and so you can kind of just see me going back, you know, hitting the areas over and over again, getting more and more of that grime, that string grime off with every pass through, making sure I don't miss any areas that even though, even if they are in the recess, they would light would still hit them a little bit like that leg that I was working on. Uh, because with working with such a big sponge, some areas will need a little bit of like specific attention to detail, but you just want to be very light with it. You don't want to remove paint from the recesses. Um, and so I'm very much hitting it exactly how light would hit it. And um, it's a very quick and simple process and you just want to keep working at it. Keep, you know, looking at the model at different angles, make sure that you don't miss any areas because uh, once, uh, once you go to the next step, it's kind of hard to fix it at this point. Uh, so you just want to make sure before you move on and after this passes step that you've looked at your model from multiple angles, multiple perspectives, maybe set it, set it down, come back to it. Um, and make sure that you know when you're looking at this model that the all the, sh the recesses are what we want to still have this enamel paint in it um, so uh, looking at this guy specifically uh, his legs will be much darker the inside of the cloak which is one of the great reasons why I love this for speed painting is that a lot of the areas that you, you uh, don't waste a lot of time painting you can be very messy with your painting you don't have to fully get into every crevice with all of your base coats you let this paint do the work for you and then you just simply make it work for you and so i've kind of gone through at this point uh, i've gotten all the raised edges um, everything's looking very well shadowed um, and then i'm simply going to do uh, some powder pigments and the goal of these powder pigments is they are very transparent uh, dusty paints um, and so my theme for my, this army is a, is a desert theme, uh, but there are so many different powder pigments uh, that you can create any combo you want to create, whatever type of scenery you want. So I went with orange, a very light orange and a dark red to sort of simulate that uh, um, desert, the Sahara, you know, Grand Canyon look. And so what I'm simply gonna do is I took a uh, old, bad, like worn out dry brush and I simply, uh, I have a dust box, but you don't necessarily have to have one, but I like to keep my painting area a little clean and this can be very messy. So this is one of the, uh, something that you wanna make sure that you are prepared for is it is extremely messy. I do it in, in my airbrush studio. Uh, I'm double gloved up so I don't get it everywhere. And um, I'm doing it over an area that I can clean up later because the dust will fall. And so I'm just gonna be lightly patting this onto the base um, because we're gonna, we're gonna blend this model into the base. It creates um, contrast. And so we're, I'm using darker colors than what I've used on the model. So it creates that darker contrast at the bottom of the model, leading up to the brighter top that we're gonna leave untouched with the dust. But what you also wanna do is you wanna make it look natural. The, the best of that way that I can explain making things like this look natural is if you think, if, if you were a baseball player and you were to slide in the dirt, what areas of you do you think would be the most dusty with that sort of, you know, uh, bait, you know, the dirt that they use on the mountains. And so if he was in the middle of combat, if he was fighting with people, getting down, getting dirty, what areas of him would be hit the most? His legs, um, any dragging cloth, like his, uh, um, uh, his, uh, his little cloth that he has hanging down off or his waist, uh, his waist his weapon would be hitting to the ground, slamming through people. Um, if, you know, hit the bottoms of his hands, if he had if he had hit the ground or if he had like taken somebody to the ground, the bottoms of his arms would also get a little bit dusty. Um, and, you know, and with, uh, with the way desert wind works, you know, you might also see just general cloth on the top of his chest have a very, very light amount. And so you wanna kind of use more at the bottom of the model than you do at the top. 
And so you can see I'm just very lightly hitting the bottoms of his hands, um, the very tips of the cloth on his chest, the very tip of his uh, breastplate. And one of the great things about powder pigments like this is if you accidentally put too much on, uh, say I simply either use my finger um, or uh, once I've gotten a lot of the powder off the dry brush, I go back and I just keep hitting it like I would be, you know, feathering. If you like a, like when you feather on makeup or anything like that, you just feather it and uh, it'll get more of the dust off and make it more transparent. Um, and more of the, the, the color underneath it will show through. So that's why we do a lot of the base coats, a lot of the underpainting, so that when we do this uh, powder pigment, those colors are still very slightly showing through uh, and, it's, and it lends to the color and the overall variation of color in the model because that is the goal of the streaking grime and the powder pigment pigments is to very quickly blend this model into the base and create a lot of color variation um, make it look more natural, uh, less, you know, less cartoony with, uh, with the typical layering style that most people use, as that is my preferred uh, type of painting. I like more realistic, down, dirty, gritty um, painting styles than the stereotypical uh, miniature painting style that a lot of people learn with acrylics. Um, and so there's really no, you know, and that's why, another reason why I love this painting style. There's no, there's no wrong answer. This is very much a Bob Ross style painting. Everything is just a happy little mistake. Um, you know, if you accidentally put too much paint or too much grime or too much powder pigment, you just, you can easily just fix it in the next step or just uh, remove it. And uh, and here what I'm doing is uh, I've taken some of the dark red um, and I just sort of lightly put it in random spots. Uh, whereas with the light brown, we did the, we caked the whole uh, area and that we wanted uh, dusted with it. But the red, we just want to accentuate because it's a very strong pigment. And we just want a little bit of that red that you that you would find in uh, the Grand, uh, in the rocks, the Grand Canyon, the, the you know, uh, very much the Midwest of American desert type of desert. Cause there's, you know, we very, there's the two different types of um, deserty sand really is like the pure orange and then there's like the reddish orange one and I very much like the reddish orange it lends two different colors I simply just took you know these two powder pigments and uh, put them in ways where it really creates a lot of color variation really quickly and you can do this with a ton of different color combinations uh, if you do a you know dirt if you do a dark brown and then maybe throw in some light brown in there you create a very like dirty muddy appearance but that's uh, the, after this. This uh, I just go and varnish the model, and he is done. And others, aside from a few couple minutes of small cutting, I mean, this was about uh, 30 minutes of painting altogether, and he is good to go. And so I just wanted to spend this last uh, minute to kind of explain um, what I hope you take from the video. Um, so I'm just going to reiterate the, sort of the main focal points. Um, that I did on this model that I recreate on every model that I paint. Um, so we want to focus on using bright colors to draw the eye. So uh, brightest on the top, darkest on the bottom so that we can contrast from dark to light. Uh, you want to use, um, I, I tend to use uh, the grime and the pigments are kind of the, the secret technique to painting very quick uh, and making things look more realistic while also keeping that speed up and creating a lot of color variation, a lot of noise that we want to make models look good. Um, and very much just making the style your own. You can take this and change, just change the colors and and make paint your whole army that way. And I really wanted um, to give newer painters, albeit there, there are some supplies and some, um, uh, you know, some extra equipment that you might need for this, uh, this way of painting. But uh, starting off, uh, once you've got the very basics of painting, you know, maybe you've painted a couple models or two, um, learning to paint this way was uh, a game changer for me. And I, I had become frustrated uh, painting to where I wasn't enjoying it. And then I sort of figured out uh, my this style and it kind of um, really changed how I view painting and I hope that uh, if maybe you're finding painting to be uh, taking too long 
uh, that you're not getting any your armies painted up or you're just not having fun because it feels like you just can't grasp you know you know highlighting or um, bl blending anything like that I feel like this is a much easier alternative uh, for people once they understand how streak and grind paint works how to apply it properly remove it properly and then uh, applying the pigments but a lot of it is just simply understanding what colors you should use and understanding where light would hit i think those are the two concepts that once you have them you can easily take this style of painting and apply it to your own army and i, I really hope you uh enjoyed um this little uh tutorial and on speed painting and pretty much uh, very much uh what a lot of people who use streak and grime tend to do with speed painting but uh i like to i like to think that i sort of fell into my own style with this this way of doing things um and if you have any other questions uh i am always able to be reached at uh this youtube channel or i can be reached on instagram at tadpolej uh, where you can also see other examples of using this technique um and i I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.